Graphically, the key issue of this course is shown by this image. In a nutshell, we can see what meteorological navigation is about. We could show the weather at sea in the shape of a large wave that is usually moving from west to east across the oceans and the continents. This wave is generated by the large anticyclone systems, the high pressure areas, and the low pressure systems alternate according to the teaching of the weathermen that winds rotate in an anticlockwise way in the northern hemisphere. Take, for example, two boats, a blue boat and a red one, sailing westward. The important point is that the two boats, albeit keeping the same route to the approaching system, are both navigating towards the low, but will meet quite different marine weather conditions. As you can see, the boat sailing to the north of the axis of the movement of the low will always have favorable winds, exactly because winds blow anti-clockwise on this area. On the other hand, the red boat sailing westward will encounter headwinds at some point. What we need to get used to is to consider the weather picture not just in a horizontal perspective, the clouds, the changing wind, the waves, but from the top view, i.e. a synoptic perspective, just like the image shown here. What can we notice here? First thing, we get the symbols of the weather system. H stands for high, high pressure, L stands for low, low pressure. We then see other symbols. These are the symbols of the fronts. A warm front, i.e. a cloud system generated by the incoming of a mass of warm air, and a cold front, a cloud system generated by the incoming of a mass of cold air. Here on top, as if you could get the shape of the closing blades of a scissors, the warm and the cold fronts are moving one on top of the other. This structure is named occlusion and it is just a system of clouds. It's important that you can recognize them being able to behave accordingly when at sea. A sharp change between the south-southwestern airflow and the northwestern breaking winds is clearly noticeable as the cold front is transiting. During the navigation, this is usually the most difficult area for sailing. In this area, the sea state gets chaotic. The wind keeps changing direction in a rapid way, and that's when sailing is getting much harder. If you are to the north or south of the movement of a low pressure system, that makes the difference. The boat to the north of the axis of the depression movement, enjoying a constant favorable wind, will always have a good, faster and easier sailing. The boat to the south of the axis of the movement of the low, instead, will go against headwinds, facing high seas. All this is because the boats are sailing westward, otherwise it's going to be exactly the opposite. If you had a boat positioned on the northern side, navigating from west to east, it would approach headwinds. On the contrary, if your position is south of the low and you are navigating from west to east, it would enjoy favorable winds. These theories can look pretty simple or simplified, but in actual fact, they are quite technical. When basing the navigation on meteorological principles in the Mediterranean, the ocean, or other parts of the world, ship captains and skilled sailors always try to keep their position along with the moving weather systems. In general, it is to be pointed out that inside the low-pressure systems, the weather is disturbed and the marine weather conditions are definitely rough. Whereas within the high pressure areas where the pressure gradient, i.e. the pressure differences, is minimal and the winds also keep on the moderate side, good weather conditions can be found. In the transition zone between the depression and the high, 
the air flows definitely increase their speed. So it is not always true that anticyclones bring fine weather. We need to understand whether we are inside an anticyclone, where conditions are actually fine, or to its edge, where marine weather conditions are going to be difficult because of the sustained winds.